right. Go ahead and open your Bibles, if you will, to the um, fifth chapter of the book of Romans. The fifth chapter of the book of Romans. Praise the Lord. It's in the oven. <laughs> guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just had to tell them where their, where their food was. Praise God. Amen. How many love Jesus? Amen. Now, listen, we're, we're living in difficult times in, 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 in as far as the world is concerned. I mean, uh, if you start reading the Bible, you know, things like wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and pestilence and, and all that, and destruction and all that kind of stuff, and you start looking at the, the economies around the world and the things that are going on, I mean, Europe is just in absolute chaos. They don't know what to do over there. Um, I mean, Greece, Spain, um, France just uh, announced they're adding a 75% tax to the super rich. If you make more than a million euros a year, they're going, you're going to get taxed at 75% in France. Does anybody understand how much that means? A euro is running about 1.29 to a dollar. That means the person who's making a million euros is making $1,290,000. At 75%, they're going to get to keep about uh, 300,000, 350,000 of it. They said, I mean, in Spain, all the big companies in Spain are leaving because Spain has just instituted some extreme tax measures on companies. So all the companies are shutting down and leaving. Greece is an absolute, is absolutely, their economy is destroyed. It's been shored up only. The, the other governments are, are, are just doing emergency monetary things to try to keep Greece from co totally collapsing. And it's, it's about to collapse in anarchy. So you look at the economic, in our, in our nation, we're $16 trillion in debt right now. Uh, China may, may more of us than we do. Um, you know, the debt is, is, is crazy. Each American, each American, your children, all have about $165,000 each in debt. Just American debt, not personal debt, the American debt. Uh, when you look around the world, there's wars. I mean, the, 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 um, the, it's the Islamists who are wanting to kill anybody that's a Jew or a Christian. Um, you know, the nations are trying to get a hold of nuclear bombs. Uh, Abinajad has said that the destruction of Israel, or the annihilation of Israel, is his number one goal. And they're trying to get, they're, they're trying to get a nuclear weapon for one reason, to destroy Israel. You know, when you look around, there are things, things can be so chaotic and so uh, overwhelmingly um, depressing. When you look at the news and you hear this and you see all this, you look around the world and China is, is you know, doing this thing. Russia's trying to, you know, rise back up. You know, listen, uh, um, Putin is old KGB. And, you know, kind of like the old saying of, you know, uh, once something's always something. Well, he's always, once a KGB, you're probably always a KGB. I mean, in other words, the world is in disarray. And the problem for the church is that if you allow what's going on in the world to infiltrate your thinking and infiltrate your life, you will be defeated and caught up in the, in the defeatist and the depression of what's going on in the world. But I want to tell you something today. Jesus Christ came not so we could be defeated, but that so we could reign in life, praise God. We are called to be the church of the living God. We are here on, on, under difficult diplomatic immunity as ambassadors for Christ. We are not here to be defeated. The laws of this world do not apply to us unless we relinquish our rights to our immunity. Amen. Are you here? You're going home. That means that we can ride through the middle of it all and Satan can come and say, I'm going to enforce sickness on you and you show him the flag out there on the front of your car, the blood-stained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ and say, I'm of the kingdom of heaven, praise God. You can't touch me, praise God. You know, one, one of the things that happened that a few weeks ago in Libya, those Libyans attacked, let's just face it, it wasn't an attack, he wasn't killed, it was a murder, it was a terrorist attack, and that Libyan consulate, that soil that they went in on, you know, when you, any council anywhere in the world from any nation is considered their soil. That was American soil. That was an act of war. But I want to point out the fact that it's American soil. And see where Jesus said, not what Jesus, well, the Old Testament said, God said to the, church, the children of Israel, that wherever for your foot shall tread, I've given it to you. So wherever I go, that's heavenly soil, praise God. Amen. I'm, when Satan comes up, he can't stand on my ground, glory to God. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. So it's time we grab ourselves by the nap of the neck, shape up, look yourself in the mirror and say, straighten up, boy, straighten up, girl, and let's get with the program. We're kings and priests under our God. Amen. Instead of 
stop taking all this junk that the world's shoving down our throat and telling you got to be defeated, you got to be broke, you got to be poor. You don't have to be poor no more. Amen. And you don't have to be defeated no more. And you don't have to be anything anymore except victorious. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Paul writes to the church in the fifth chapter of the book of Romans. Let's go there. Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> we are to reign in life as kings. That's what Paul said. He says here, um, look here in verse so 17, Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, that was Adam, by Adam's offense. When Adam in the garden, if, and we kind of got to go back a little bit and look at where Adam was when he was created. The Bible said, God said, and he said, let us... Now, the word there for God is Elohim. E-L-O-H-I-M is the transliteral uh, uh, interpretation of that Hebrew word, Elohim. And it means God or, or majesty in the plurality of three or more. And so when God said, let us, he's talking about Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. What's that mean? You got authority to rule. When you have a king, you have a kingdom. A kingdom, the word kingdom, it comes from, the, from, from compounding the words king's dominion, kingdom. Okay? The king's dominion is the kingdom. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, after our kind, and let them have dominion. What? Over their domain, over what God has created, praise God. And over all, the, he gave man the, the authority over all the works of his hands. Go read Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3. It's in there. God created man as to have a reign and a kingdom. Glory to God. What happened? Adam sold it out to the devil. Chapter 3. He shows up, tempts Eve, Adam's in there and goes, what's going on, dude? And, and instead of doing what he's supposed to do, which is what? Subdue the earth. Do you know, notice God gave man the authority to subdue. We got too many people going around, oh, the devil's after me. Oh, what am I going to do? The devil's going to get me. Oh, Jesus, help me, help me, help me. You do something about it. You subdue. You take authority. Amen. <clears throat> And so Adam, Adam was originally created to have, dom, have authority in the dominion that God gave him, yet he turned around and sold it out to Satan, committed high treason, sold mankind. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 5 verse 17, for by one man's offense, Adam's treason, death reigned. Death reigned by one. We... The unregenerated person, and up until the time of the Lord Jesus Christ coming and dying on the cross and paying the price for our sin and being raised from the dead and nailing the uh, offenses that were contrary to us to his cross and taking it out of the way, glory to God. Up and until that time, death reigned over man, and man couldn't do a thing about it. <coughs> he could not get out from under that authority of death. Even under the old covenant, the best he could do was get to Abraham's bosom. He couldn't get to heaven. Man was in the upper region of hell. He was, Abraham's bosom was the upper region where the, where the, the departed saints went, but they couldn't go to heaven. Why? Because they were still spiritually dead men. They were still spiritually separated from God under a promissory note that when the Messiah came, and remember the Bible says he went and preached to the captives in captivity. They had to believe on him just like everybody else, praise God. And the Bible says he led captive, captive. He took that whole group of Abraham's bosom right out. Hallelujah. And a few of them, if you read Matthew's gospel, when they came up on the way to heaven, picked up the body, went around and talked to a few folk. That's right. And Matthew's gospel says that. Right. Some people don't know that. It says that some of the saints came up and went into the city and many were seen of many. Can you imagine being David's great, 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 great nephew sitting in your house and King David comes walking in and said, I saw him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yo, 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 come on, church. I know some people going, that's a hand. I ain't messing with that now. No! The Bible says that those men of the Old Testament saints picked up their bodies, went into the street, and were seen of many. Well, I don't believe that. Come here, let me slap you. 
You need to believe the Bible. Amen. amen. I, I said, amen. amen. Anybody know? Is that Matthew 15, 54 or something? Come on, I'm, I'm just going to show it to you. Some of you look, look at me, you usually can't be in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Y'all hear you going home. Okay, Matthew 27, 52. And the graves were opened, and many of bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. That's what it says. Amen. That's Matthew 27, 50, 51, 52, 53. That whole passage right there. After his resurrection, they rose up. Can you imagine the high priest having his great-grandfather who's been asleep for 40 years come and say, you wrong. I just met the real high priest of our confession. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. Thank you. All right, we're not having barbecue today, so wake up. Come on, this is this is not this is not the church of the first frozen chosen. Hallelujah. So it says here. So so Jesus paid the price, but death had reigned. He came to destroy the power of death. Amen. He came to take the authority of death that reigned over man from the time Adam committed high treason. Glory to God. What, what happened? See, when man died in the old covenant, even up until the time Jesus was raised from up until that time, when man died, the only thing he could do was die either and go to hell and the, the place of suffering and, and, and be eternally tormented or go to Abraham's bosom if he had kept enough of the law to wait for the day Jesus came. But death still reigned over him. It wasn't until Jesus came and broke the authority of death that man could say, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord. I, rep I accept you as my Lord. I confess that you are Lord, that God has raised you from the dead, and he was born again, what? From death unto life. He wasn't born physically. And Nicodemus asked that question, and all the women said, help me, Jesus. Am I off my game this morning? <laughs> Y'all just kind of sitting there. It's cloudy out there. It's raining. Now, remember Nicodemus, Jesus said, send him and be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus says, can I go the second time into my mother's womb? Hello, and be born. And Jesus said, are you a teacher of Israel? I don't know, understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. I'm talking about being born from spiritual death. And you see, death doesn't mean you don't exist. Death means you're separated from something. Physical death is a separation of the human spirit from the human body. You don't cease to exist. Spiritual death is a separation of the human spirit from God's spirit. That's death because you're not connected to life. He is life. Life does not mean existence. There are people who are dead, but they, they are existing. But they're not alive. They're not alive unto God. His life is not in them. Are you here? And so death reigned. For by one man's office, Adam in the Garden of Eden, born, created, actually wasn't born, created, God breathed into him the breath of life, God's very spirit. You know, the, the interesting thing is when God, and when God said, the Bible, uh, the, the Bible says God breathed in him the breath of life, that word for breath, it's the same with the Hebrew and the Greek. It can be translated spirit, life, or wind. So you can say it this way. God breathed into him the spirit of life. God took of his own spirit and put in that body he had created out of the dust of the ground. And man became a living soul. One translation says a speaking spirit. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. And he stood him up and Satan had just about had a heart attack. Hello. Satan and Sanford. Elizabeth! Out anyway. <laughs> Some of you already know who Sanford is, do you? <laughs> Sanford and Son. You know, interesting, he did that thing so many times he died on stage with a heart attack, actually, real life. 
You better watch what you do all the time. <laughs> Adam became a speaking spirit. He became, a, he became the very image of God. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Yeah. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Now that's King James, but the word there is Elohim. God. Thou hast made him a little lower than yourself. Why, is it, why? Because God is the original. But God took the very spirit matter, the very existence of what he is, and put it in that body. And Adam became a living soul, a speaking spirit. And God said, you have dominion. Subdue the earth and replenish the earth. And then Bozo went and turned it over to the devil. Hello? You think, man, what would, what would happen if Adam had just gone, Satan, go to Mars? Hello. Somebody, some people, see, people get crazy. Think we all be running around naked. No, we wouldn't. Adam wasn't naked. He was covered in the glory of God. The Bible says that when they ate of the fruit, then their eyes were open and they knew they were naked. What? The light, the light went out. The glory went out. The, see, they were covered in the glory just like Jesus when he came out of the Mount of Transfiguration. His glory so emanated out of him, it even changed the clothes he was wearing at the time. The raiment changed because of the glory. And see, that was just a, a letting out. Moses got up into the presence of God in the mountain, and when he came down, they had to put a veil on his face because just, just being in the presence of God, the, 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 the glory of God got into his, his, his flesh and radiated out in such brightness. They had to cover his face. Heaven is lighted from the glory, from the, from the presence of God. Right out of the throne. They don't have street lights. They got God. Amen. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory. Man, shut up about the glory to God. I'll tell you, the, the angels get around, the, get around the throne. They say, hallelujah, are you here? They say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And they fly around with six wings. They're flying with two, covering their face with two, and covering their feet with two. Because the glory is so awesome. You think you've seen stuff here. You know, all you ever had on earth is a little brill cream blessing, a little dab of do ya. Hello. I'm telling you, God created man, hallelujah, to reign in this life. But he sold out, Adam sold out in the Garden of Eden. And Paul writes in Romans and says, for as death reigned, he sold man into the captivity of a new king. Satan is called now after this, the God of this world. And death reigned over man because of one offense, because of one offense called treason. <laughs> but I like God. Can you hear John the Baptist? He sees Jesus coming and he says, Behold the Lamb of God that's going to be slain sometime soon. Is that not what he said? Y'all read. No, that's right. We, see, when you, when you educate people in the Bible, you can't trick them. I'll let you figure some more stuff out of that one. He said, Behold the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. See, as God envisioned his creation, he saw what was going to happen, and he already had the plan to fix it. <laughs> he even told Satan the day that Adam committed high treason. Now, son, I'm going to tell you something here. Glory to God. Now, you, you just went and got the authority you think you got, but I want you to know something. There's one coming after. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's going to bruise your head, and you're going to bruise his heel. I like something Jerry Savelle said a number of years ago. He said, down in Texas, we translate it this way. Boy, he's coming, and he's going to bust your head. Amen. So the minute that Satan got the authority of Adam, he was looking over his shoulder. Because there was one coming, glory to God. Hallelujah. There was one coming who, under, who was coming without authority and would not lose it, praise God. And he was coming, and I'm going to tell you what, he's coming looking for you. Amen. And when he gets up, catches up with you, he's going to bust your head. Amen. And he's going to take back your authority and give it back to man, glory to God. Hallelujah, praise God. For his death reign, death was reigning, but it was reigning under um, duress. The whole time Satan had the authority, he's, 
He's like a godfather. You know what? Have you ever seen the mob? They kill somebody, and the rest of the time, they, they, they think they're really cool, but they surround themselves with a bunch of people. Why? Because they know somebody's going to try to kill them. Eventually, they're going to get them, and they know it. That's how it works. <clears throat> and John the Baptist looked up and said, he said this one day, he said, there is one who cometh after me who's mightier than me. Man, they, enjoy, they were enjoying his message. He wasn't a Pharisee. He wasn't a Sadducee. He wasn't playing the games. He wasn't giving them religion. He was coming and talking about turning and having a heart for God and serving the Lord. And, he, and they said, are you the one that should come? He said, no, there's one that's coming after me who's mightier than me. He said, I'm baptizing you with water. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Satan, I'm going to tell you something. One of the things want, Satan wants out of the church is her fire. He wants to back us into a corner, make a, a bunch of Milly Mouth, Mickey Mouse weenies. You, got, you can't say that in public. Oh, you're hateful. If you say what the Bible says, that's hateful. You can't talk about that it's wrong to do this and wrong to do that. That's hate speech. No, it's love speech. Why? Because sin kills and sin destroys and sin takes people to hell. And it's our job to tell them, hey, Jesus came to deliver people. It's hate speech to tell people they can't be married if they're, not, if they're man and man and woman and woman. It's not hate speech. It's no more hate speech than that than telling, you know, listen. See, see, the world's tried this with child rearing. Don't, don't spank your children. Don't tell them no. You'll break their spirit. I'm going to tell you something. If they got an electrical cable, they cut it in half, strip the wires, got a hold of both ends of it, and get ready to plug it in, I'm going to stop them. Oh, go ahead, honey. You'll find out that, you know, you, you need to learn. I don't want to break your spirit. They may not be here for you to, to, to let them find out what happened. Hello? You don't let people die to prove that you're, you, you, you respect their decisions. Now, we love people. Death reigned. Mankind's under, 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 under death. People are born into death. There's no escape. If they can keep the law, if they can keep the whole law, all 3,000 plus, and probably more than that, ordinances, they could get saved. There's only one that ever, ever walked the earth and never broke a one. The Bible says he was tempted at every point like we are yet without sin. Jesus is the only one who, who absolutely kept the entire law without breaking it. Everybody else broke it. What happens when you broke it? You're guilty of the whole thing. Then we what? Death reigns. Death reigns. So we have, a, we have a lineage of humanity who's known nothing but the reign of spiritual death over their life. But God had a plan. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Satan, I tell you, when Satan had Jesus on the cross, and, he is, and Jesus is pouring out his life, and he's, he's being made sin for us who knew no sin, oh, my, 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 Satan thought he had it. I'm telling you, they ordered an extra case of Jack Daniels, ordered some Bud 64s, made him long neck on ice in hell. I don't know how they got ice in hell, but I'm telling you, they're setting up the party because they're going to take out the Son of God. And if they defeat Jesus, they defeated the plan of God. Except God said, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Why? Because Jesus, Satan, illegally took captive of him. And Jesus rose up, and the Bible says he hurled back, in the book of Colossians, he hurled back principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And the Bible says this, Jesus said this, I am, he, I am the first and last, the Alpha and the Omega, he who is dead and is now alive, and I have the keys of, I have the keys of, I have the keys of death and hell. What? Death can no longer reign slavishly over humanity. 
Man can now be set free from the dominion and the authority of death through faith in Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So Harry, here we are in Romans again. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. <laughs> I like these next words. Much more. They which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Just as death had reigned over humanity, when you come into Jesus, now you reign, glory to God. You're a king, hallelujah. You reign over the authorities of darkness, praise God. Death no longer has authority nor dominion over you. Some people get so dumb. Well, how are we going to die if we don't get sick? Like they did in the Old Testament. They call all the kids in. Say, so I'm getting ready to leave. You've been good. You're blessed. You've been bad. You're cursed. Bless, curse, bless, curse, bless, bless, curse, curse, bless, bless. Bye. Boom. <coughs> Took off. Just threw the feet up and went home. I thought that's the thing, the way to go home. Go home when, it's, when you're ready to go. When you say it's time, you look at the Bible and say, oh, well, those Old Testament saints in the book of Hebrews died. The Bible says they, 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 they chose not to be delivered. Read it. They chose not to be delivered. That's what it says. Meaning they could have been. They couldn't take Jesus until they allowed him. They went to throw him off a cliff one day. The Bible says he just passed through the midst of them. I kind of got the feeling it was kind of like that, uh, that Roman soldier in the, and those Roman soldiers in the garden. As he walked, they just went plump, 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 plump. And everybody's going, what, what happened? What happened? What happened? Where'd he go? So he reigned. Jesus' ministry, he reigns over death. He walks on water. He calms storms. He heals the sick. He casts out devils. He raises the dead. Glory, glory to God. He opens blind eyes. Why? He's reigning in life as a king. Well, that's just because Jesus was the Son of God. Have you ever read Philippians? The Bible says he stripped himself. Now, this is not, this is not King James. You're not going to have to get different translations. He stripped himself of his rights to deity and the glory and walked among us as a man. What he did, he did as a man under the covenant who just reigned according to the word. When the ten lepers came to Jesus, he did not go, I am the Son of God, be healed. He said, go, show yourself to the priest according to the commandment of Moses. Hello? And as they went, they were cleansed. But one turned about and came back to him and worshipped him. He said, where, were there not ten? Where are the nine? And, and Jesus said, you know, thy faith has made thee whole, go in peace. He, I love that. Thy faith has made thee whole. See, the other guys got cleansed. You know, leprosy, your, your, finger, your extremities rot off. Nose will fall off, ears will fall off, fingertips will fall off. I mean, just, it just, it's, a, it's, a, it's extremely debilitating, a horrible disease. And, and, it, and things just, they, 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 this, the flesh just dies and falls off. None of them got cleansed. I mean, they may, they may not have a nose, but they're not going to die now. This guy got made whole. But what did Jesus say? Thy faith has made thee whole. He didn't say, you know, what's he doing? He's walking and reigning as a king in life. And Paul said to the church that even as death reigned over man, had, was slavishly dictated to man what he had to do and how he had to live and what was going to happen to him. I mean, think of, think of how people talk. We don't have terms like that. Tickled me to life. Laugh so hard I thought I'd have a mini rapture. What were you? Laugh so hard I thought I was going to die. That tickled me to death. Our language is filled with it. Why? Because death reigned. Kingdom of death was the authority and the author over mankind's thinking. We got people now, they, you know, some professor got up in class the other day in some university here in America, stripped naked and started hollering, there's no God. You know he's got devils. I mean, you scarred those students, they had to get counseling and everything, I'm sure. <laughs> I 
<laughs> you know? Yeah, and there is no God. He's naked. Dear God, you know, you, you need help. I hope they fired him. I hope they did. Anyway. But the, the thinking of mankind is so perverse and so dark because death has reigned for so long. But wherever the light of the gospel goes, it begins to change humanity. Now, people talk about women's rights and all that stuff. Honey, America thinks they got a gig on that thing. You go some country where their women are really treated like, like dogs. Go to a Muslim country. Women, women are not human beings. There's things they do to women that are just, that are just absolutely uh, animalistic. And, 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 I mean, they treat dogs better. Oh, I want equal pay. My God, women, go, go check out some places in Africa and see what it's really like to be mistreated in a society. Why? Because the light of the gospel's come. Women are treated much better and way, 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 way better here than anywhere in the world because of the light of the gospel. About the light of the gospel. You go in countries where there's no gospel and they're dogs. They're only for the man's pleasure and, his, and they can kill their wife. If she didn't do what he wants her to do, however, he can kill her. There's not, there is no consequence to it. Because a lot of, see, the truth of the gospel, our, our constitution, you know, and uh, John, John Barton just came out, there's, they got a new thing out called the, uh, the constitutional Bible. And they, and they go in there and they, they've taken all the reason that the writers put certain things into the constitution and there was a scriptural basis for everything they did. One of the things, with the, remember the separation of powers? Y'all do remember that. I know we're having some problems with that these days. We got, you know, the past couple of presidents. Uh, I think the last, at least last because Bush began to expand it, and Obama's done the same thing. Executive orders. And they use those to override the, the Congress. Bush started, he did, he did a lot of that. Uh, all presidents have had that, but, you know, the last two have really taken it to a new level. The reason that they had a, uh, the separation of powers was they used the scripture in the Old Testament. They talked about the heart of men is evil. They knew if, man, if anybody could have absolute power, they would mis at some point they would misuse it. And so they separated the powers to make sure we couldn't have one person misusing, hoping that at least one branch out of the three wouldn't be evil at the time. Why? Because darkness reigned over the hearts of men. But these men who did that prayed. If you go back and study our Constitution, they, they, were, they couldn't make an agreement on some things to do with the, with the uh, Constitution. They went and prayed for three days and came back and got it. Why? Because, because they, they, in, they invited the Creator, God, to give them the wisdom, what? The light of wisdom from heaven and wrote the document we call the Constitution of the United States of America. That's why, everybody, that's why evil men have been trying to undo it ever since, using court systems, using everything they can to undo it. Why? Because it was a godly document. Death reigned. Death reigned. But much more, much more shall we reign in life. Now think about it. Now let's, let's, let's take this over. Let's get to the spiritual side of this thing. God has called you to reign. He has not called you to be defeated. He has not called you to get in the morning and see that your stocks lost $30,000 last night. And you have to, have to go overcome not killing yourself. God did not call you to, you know, gas spike. I, mean, I tell you, California gas spike. My brother-in-law lives in California. Jamie talked to him last night. He said it's, it went up in, four, in like three or four days. It went up 40 cents a gallon. One night it went up 20 cents overnight. Went to bed one night. It was one thing. Got it next morning. It was 20 cents higher. The next day, 10 more cents. The next day, 10 more cents. 40 cents, they've got gas, they're paying, for, they're paying over $5 a gallon for regular. And they're being rationed. Well, that could, that could bother you if you didn't know how to reign in life. You see, though I'm in this world, I'm not of this world. Paul writes, the Word of God says that we're ambassadors for Christ. I live from a different kingdom. You live from a different kingdom. Our source is a different kingdom. You're not tied to Wall Street. You're tied to heaven. And God doesn't have to hot the pearly gates to pay the note on the throne. I just want you to know that. Amen. Hallelujah. The streets are made of gold. Hallelujah. The building and foundations are topazes and rubies and diamonds and emeralds. Glory to God. I want you to know it's a city 1,500 miles high, 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles deep. Glory to God. That's 1,500 cubic miles of a city of gold. The street, the gold, the streets are so pure, it's clear. 
There is not an economic problem in heaven. Are you here? And God, this, what did, what did, what did uh, um, Paul say to the church at Philippi? But my God shall supply all your need according to Wall Street. According to the Fed. According to the world currency situation. This is how we reign in life. You reign over your finances because you understand who you're connected to. Glory to God. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise God. Amen. <coughs> God, like one guy said, you know, God owns the cattle of a thousand hills and the taters under them. You are to reign, church. You're not to be depressed. I know you can turn on the television. Listen, I'll tell you something. You need to, st you need to turn off uh, whoever, ABC, CBS, MSNBC, Fox, whoever it is, and turn on Holy Ghost Channel. HGTV, that's right. Not Home and Garden either. I'm talking about Holy Ghost television. <laughs> Amen. I mean, glory to God. You need to turn on, you need to turn that on and get a revelation on the inside of you. Hallelujah. You know, Paul, uh, the Word of God says over here in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And the King James says a peculiar people, and people, oh, I'm peculiar. You know, now, the word there in the Greek really means purchased. I'm a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a purchased. What you've been purchased by? I've been bought by the blood. Hallelujah. Jesus shed the precious blood that was in his flesh to redeem me from destruction and despair. Glory to God. I've been bought by him. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm bought by him. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Stop walking in darkness. Stop walking in defeat. Stop walking like nothing ever happened to you. You've been born again. You've been brought out of the, translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Glory to God. Amen. Look over in Ephesians chapter 2. I'm sorry, chapter 1. We could read this whole prayer. I guess we'll have to. Starting in verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes... I'll tell you what, close your eyes and listen to my voice. That the, uh, this is a prayer for the church. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power <clears throat> to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now look at me. He said he wants us to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. God wants you to have a revelation and experiential knowledge of the power in your life, the very same power that he used when he raised Christ up from the dead. That's what he said right there. 
You know what it says right there? According to the working of his mighty power. See, and what he says here, verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being light, you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and it, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ. In other words, he wants us to have, a, he wants us to have wisdom and revelation of the power the very same power that raised Christ up from the dead. He wants you to experience that. Amen. Look at that. And set him at his own right hand in the heavenly place. Where is Jesus seated? Far above all principality, power, might, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet. Well, I talk, talk about Jesus, keep reading, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Next verse says, which is his body. Where are we seated? Far above. Amen. Why? Because we reign in life in Christ Jesus. By one, Christ Jesus. And as, the, as death reigned over man, think of, the, think of the effect death has had on man. Much more through the abundance of grace we shall reign in life by one. The way that death has reigned over man, we're to reign in life much more. Why? Because we're seated with him. The Bible says that we were raised up with him and made, verse chapter 2 gets down to verse 8, 9, and 10 says, we were raised up with him and made to sit with him in heavenly places. Where is that? Far above. I said far above. I said far above. How many of you have ever flown before? Let me tell you something. When you first take off, you get a couple hundred feet off the ground, that's above. But when you get it, I've, I've been as high, I think, I think on one plane, I was, we were going transatlantic, we were up at 38,000 feet. Let me want to tell you something. That's far above. You see whole nations. We were, we were up there flying about Iceland and Greenland up there, you know? Yeah, I mean, you see the, you can about to see the whole, the whole, whole thing up there at 38,000 feet. The perspective of things is totally different at 38,000 feet than it is at two feet. A car at 38,000 feet don't look the same as it does at two feet. Tried to trailer don't look the same as it, at two feet as it does at 38,000 feet. Y'all hear? A baseball field. How many of you know, baseball field looks pretty big. Get to 38,000 feet. It looks like something on your Game Boy. Are you here? Yes. We have been raised up and we are far above, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Amen? Yes. In every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. You're far above cancer. You're far above poverty. You're far above lack. You're far above defeat. You're far above calamity. You're far above. Are y'all are getting it? Come on now. You're far above. Far above. Far above. Why? Because you're seated in him. You now reign in life by one Christ Jesus. Everything becomes different when you become the king. Hello. There's a, there's a, there's a um, classical piece of literature called The Prince and the Pauper. The prince didn't want to live as a prince. He found this kid who looked a lot like him who's just a pauper, and they brought him in, and they changed places. Oh, I'll tell you something. The day that the pauper put on the prince's clothes, got cleaned up, and was dressed, and started living life, his life was different because he was the prince. And all he did was change clothes. The Bible tells us to put off the old man and put on the new man, which is created after Christ Jesus and godliness and righteousness. Put on the new man and put off the old. Change those clothes. What are you talking about? Change the way you see yourself and the way you think about yourself and begin to see yourself in royal garments of righteousness and priestly kinghood. See yourself the way the Word of God sees you. Reign in life. 
Satan wants to blind your, blind your eyes. He wants to blind you from seeing the truth. He wants to keep you captive in your mind to tell you you can't make it, that you can't win, that the economy's too bad, you'll never make it. And you can't get ahead because the housing market's horrible and the stocks are horrible and, you know, and, uh, um, <clears throat> and, and this and that and the economy's terrible and we got 23 million unemployed people in this country. You don't have to be one of them. You don't have to be one of them. Pray for those who are, but you don't have to sit there and say, well, you know, I mean, we, we had, last week we had the hee-haw song here, so I don't really want to sing that too many times. Of gloom, despair, agony on me, deep, dark depression, excessive misery, it won't be bad luck, I had no luck at all. Remember that hee-haw song? That's not the song of the redeemed. I said, that is not the song of the redeemed. Now, we, we, how many have ever heard that little chorus that we sing in the church a lot of times? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. That's not, I mean, it's a cute little chorus, it's cool. That's not what the Bible says to say. It says, for the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. That's what it says. Y'all look at me like a dog with a new bone. <laughs> Hello. The Lord is good. I said, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. What did James say? Every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. What's that mean? If it's good, it's God. Well, bad Pastor, now I believe God does bad stuff to us. Well, Jesus in John 10, 10 said, The thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I have come. What is that? That is the antithetical statement to that, that first thesis. See, the thesis is the thief kills, steals, and destroys. The, antith the uh, antithesis or uh, antithetical statement, I hate, it's antithesis is what it is, but just, it changes the way it's pronounced. Okay? It becomes the antithesis. Okay? The thesis is the thief steals, kills, and destroys. All right? Who said that? John 10, 10, look in your Bible. Jesus said the thief kills, steals, and only comes for those three reasons. He doesn't come to bless. He's coming to clean your clock. Stealing, killing, or destroying. Jesus said, I've come. I've come that they might have Zoe, life, and have it in abundance. Jesus Christ is the antithesis of Satan. Satan kills, steals, and destroys. Jesus gives life. So I tell people a lot of times, I say, get yourself a sheet of paper, write four columns on it. Right over top of one column, life. Right over top, on top of another column, death. St steal, kill, destroy. So steal, kill, destroy. So stealing, killing, destroy, destruction. And then take everything that's going on in your life and categorize it. Is it stealing from me? Is it killing me? You know, well, if, you, if you're smoking dope and shooting up, it is. So write that under there. If it's bringing destruction, hello. I mean, you're drunk and throwing the stuff through the window. And then if you find anything that's got life going on in it, write that over in the life column. Then all you got to do is over the column says life right God. And over the other three columns write devil. There you go. That's where it's coming from. Now you know where everything in your life's coming from. If it's life, it's God. If it's all those others, it's the devil. God's not trying to kill you. Jesus said, I came that they might have Zoe. Life in the absolute sense. Life in the manner that God possesses it. <clears throat> you know what the Bible says about God? In him there is light and there is no darkness at all. Whoo, glory to God. He is absolute light. How many, how many of you ever heard of the, uh, the electronic device that you, you, you heat in cool houses? We'd call it a heat pump. 
Now, a heat pump works on this premise. In the winter, because, you know, it, it, reverses, it reverses the cores. In the summer, it, the cores are reversed, and it goes in and extracts the heat out of the air inside and takes it outside and blows it out and comes back in and, and you know, keeps extracting the heat. In the winter, it reverses, and it tries to extract any heat in the outside air. Pulls it into the, to the, whatever that liquid is in there, gas that is in there, you know, and pull it to your house and release it in the house and release the heat. Any heat is extracted from the outside air and bring it back in. But there is a point called absolute cold where there is no heat. Guess what? I don't care how long you run your heat pump, you can't get any heat out of it. There's none to get. Now, a heat pump is only efficient to about what temperature, right, Marty? 30. <laughs> That's why you got these little strips on your heaters that when it gets below 30, they come on and you just watch it outside. You go outside and you see a little meter go, because <laughs> those electric coils kicked in, that supplemental heat kicked in. Why? Because there's not enough heat in the air. But there's still heat in the air at 30 and 25 and 20. But there is, I don't know what the temperature for absolute cold is, but there is a point where there is no heat. Huh? 50 below. All right, absolute cold, no heat. There's absolutely no heat in the air. You could extract it if you, if, no matter what you had. God is absolute light. In him there is no darkness at all. Every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father above in whom there is no, or Father of lights in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God is good. And as we like to say, God is good. All the time, and all the time, God is good. Can you say amen? De bon, tu le temps. Amen. God's good all the time. De. I guess I didn't say it right. Did I say it right? Do, do. Nathan, Nathan, he don't want to do his French. He just, yeah, it's too cool. Say it right. God in French. I'm close enough. Yeah. He's wimping out on me back there. Church, the God of goodness and the God of mercy sent Jesus to equip you to reign Amen. in life by one Christ Jesus. You need to stop letting right life reign on you. How many been, now, don't raise your hand, but ask yourself, how many have been letting life rain on you? How many have been letting lack rain on you? How many have been letting sickness rain on you? How many have been letting destruction rain on you? How many have been letting the stuff that's going on in the world, political, ge geographical, I mean geopolitical, uh, economical, whatever's going on all the world, been rain on you? Instead of you reigning in life by one Christ Jesus, today is your day to stand up and say no more. Dr. Thompson said one time, he said that, you know, he, he, he found himself one time and, and he, was, he was down there. It was an eagle. Eagle was out there in the chicken yard, been there all his life, you know, and he, 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 they found a baby chick. And, you know, and that baby, uh, I mean, they found a baby eagle and put that eagle out over the chicks, and it was out there just going around and pecked like all the chickens. And then one day, you know, and that, that, that eagle got big and had that big old wingspan, and it's still going around the chicken yard like a bunch of chickens pecking up the seed off the ground. But one day it flapped its wings and began to take off. And as it began to rise up above the ground, hallelujah, it, it had a different vision. And it looked back at all those chickens in the chicken yard. And it said, bye-bye chickens. Bye-bye chickens. Bye-bye chickens. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. We'll mount up on wings of eagles. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to start flapping your wings and saying, bye-bye chickens. Hallelujah. I'm not pecking out. I'm not pecking the stuff off the ground anymore. I'm going to soar with my God and reign in life as a king. When we and Nathan went hiking, we were up at Stone Mountain. We're going, I'm going to close here. We went to Stone Mountain in August. Had about a couple night camping trip up there. And we went up to the summit. And, uh, so, you know, it was, it was heating up as that day. As we go, it started heating up. And the thermal started coming up off the face of the mountain. And the hawks and the turkey buzzards, all of them, they, they, they got big wingspans. And they just started thermal drafting on all that. They just started, they, they're not even flapping. They're just, now, some little sparrow thing came flying across there, flap, 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 flap. But those guys, I mean, he's like, like a suicide kamikaze bird or something. Didn't he? David, 
But the rest of those guys are like this. They're just, they're just catching the draft. They're just, out there, they're just catching the draft, floating, letting the winds. And I tell you, it's time for us to reign and let the winds of the Spirit carry us to new heights. They said they have, found, they have seen eagles at 30 and 40,000 feet before because the draft got, so they just floated with that draft right on up. And we need to begin to draft and float, and we need to get in the thermals of God's presence and God's Spirit and float up with Him, glory to God. How, are you here? Amen. And reign, and reign, and reign as a king and a priest under our God. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the Word of God. We thank you that people are being encouraged, that you will take this message and you will take these words of encouragement. And the, as they go home and in the days ahead and the weeks ahead, as they're facing, as things try to come up and rob them and steal from them, this, these words will rise up that they reign as a king in this life. They reign in this life through Jesus Christ. Glory to God. They reign as they are kings and priests unto our God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.